tech reviews, and here's the daylight camera comparison between the Pixel 4 XL, the Pixel 3 XL, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and the S20 Ultra with the Exynos 990 chipset. If you didn't check my night camera comparison between the same phones, you can click the card showing now at the top right corner. The comparison will consist of six different categories as shown now on the screen. On the S20 Ultra, I will use the 108 megapixel mode whenever possible. Keep in mind that the 108 megapixel doesn't work with portraits. The comparison will take place in a very nice place called the Al Sif in Dubai. So let's see how each camera will perform. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Here is the first image. All of them produced a very good shot. But the first thing that caught my eyes, the difference in colors and exposure. Each phone had its own style. The Pixel 4 XL produced the least saturated colors across all of them with a pink hue that you can notice more when you look at the sky. So it's not as blue as it should be. And the image is slightly overexposed in the highlights. However, it's well exposed in the shadows so you can clearly see what's under the bridge. To me, the Pixel 4 image looks like a DSLR RAW image with a filter that gives a dramatic look to the scene. The Pixel 3 XL produced more saturated colors than the Pixel 4 XL but still keeping the natural look of the trees. It also nailed the exposure. The highlights and shadows are well exposed. There is no under or over exposure here. It also has the coolest white balance so the sky looks perfectly blue. Overall, the Pixel 3 XL produced the most natural looking image across all of them. The 11 Pro Max didn't saturate the colors, however it overexposed the highlights a bit too much, so the trees doesn't look as natural as in the Pixel 3 and 4 images. While the shadows are well exposed so you can clearly see what's under the bridge. It also has a warm white balance so the sky is not as blue as it looks in the Pixel 3 image, but is still acceptable. Overall, the 11 Pro Max didn't impress me with the overexposure, but other than this, it did well. Finally, the S20 Ultra, it went to the extreme in everything. The highlights are too much overexposed, same as the 11 Pro Max, but it also oversaturated the colors a lot more than all other phones to compensate the overexposure. While it overexposed the highlights, it did exactly the opposite in the shadows. So if you look under the bridge, you will see it's very dark, unlike the other three phones. The S20 Ultra also has the warmest white balance across all of them. Overall, the S20 Ultra produced the punchiest image that has a lot of colors and exposure. It looks good, but it's far away from natural. Now, let's zoom in to check the details, and that's when the S20 Ultra shines. Due to its 108 megapixel sensor, it produced the most detailed image with the least amount of noise. The Pixel 3 and 4 show more details than the iPhone in this image. However, the iPhone's image looks cleaner with less noise. So overall, the S20 Ultra was the best in details and noise reduction but it had an issue dealing with the shadows as it looks too dark. For the look and feel it produced overexposed images with saturated colors. The iPhone is good in noise reduction but not on the same level of the S20 Ultra and it has a decent amount of details. When it comes to the look and feel it produced overexposed image but it managed to handle the shadows better than the S20 Ultra. The Pixel 3 XL had the best exposure across all of them. It handled the highlights and shadows perfectly. It also produced the most natural looking image. On the other hand, it wasn't the best when it comes to noise reduction. Finally, the Pixel 4 XL. It had a totally different style from all of them. First, it added a pink hue to the image. Secondly, it produced the least saturated colors. However, it kept the natural look of the trees and it was similar to the Pixel 3 XL in the level of detail and noise. However, I expected more details from the Pixel 4 over the Pixel 3. Now let's move on to the next image. In this image, the Pixel 4 XL still has the same pink hue and you can notice it more when you look at the sky and the floor. The colors are slightly more saturated than the previous image and it's on the same level of saturation of the Pixel 3 XL. The white balance is slightly warm, it also nailed the exposure this time and I see the highlights and shadows are more balanced this time. The Pixel 3 XL has the coolest white balance and again the sky is perfectly blue. It nailed the exposure again, same level of color saturation, not too high or too low. The 11 Pro Max has a warmer white balance than the previous two images and more saturated colors. It also nailed the exposure, both the shadows and the highlights are well exposed and I do like the look of the iPhone's image here. 
The S20 Ultra as expected has the most saturated colors and showed the same issue with the exposure where the shadows are too dark. It also produced the warmest image. Now let's zoom in to check the details. Surprisingly, the Pixel 3 and 4 produced the most detailed images, the iPhone produced a softer image with less details, and the S20 Ultra produced the softest image with the least amount of detail, so you can barely see the texture of the building. It seems like this happened due to the S20 focus issue, because when I look at a different part of the image, I see the S20 Ultra showing the highest level of detail. Now I'm gonna test how good is the HDR of each device by pointing all of them towards the sun. In the first image, all phones except the S20 Ultra did very well with a slight edge goes to the iPhone in keeping the sun less blown out than the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 4. The S20 Ultra was the best in showing a less blown out sun, however the subject was very dark. And the first thing you will think of that I focused on the sun instead of the building, but this wasn't the case. As I kept tapping to focus on the building, but the results never changed. So I switched it to the 12 megapixel and the results got a little bit better, but with these red flares at the bottom and the top corners of the image. Overall the 11 Pro Max was the best, followed by the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 4, and the S20 Ultra was the least appealing, so let's check the next image. Again, the 11 Pro Max is the king in HDR. The S20 Ultra did a lot better this time, but still the subject looks darker than what it should be. The Pixel 4 did better than the Pixel 3 this time in keeping the sun less blown out, but the subject is better exposed in the Pixel 3 XL image. And when I switch it to the 12 megapixel on the S20 Ultra, I get better HDR results. Same thing happened with the last image, but still getting these red flares at the bottom and top parts of the image. Let me show you one final image before jumping to the next test. So overall, the 11 Pro Max is the best, followed by the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 4 and the S20 Ultra comes last. But if you want to get better HDR results, it's better to use the 12 megapixel mode instead of the 108 megapixel. So let's move on to the portraits comparison. Here is the first portrait shot. All of them did an amazing job, but there are some small differences. The 11 Pro Max has the brightest image, while the other three phones are slightly darker. The second difference is between the Pixel 3 and the others in the blur effect. Because the Pixel 3 uses only one lens and the phone rely on the software for subject isolation, it kept everything in focus and only blurred the back wall. While the other three phones blurred objects gradually starting from the car's windshield and none of them had issues with the subject isolation. When it comes to details, the S20 Ultra produced the most detailed image with the least amount of noise, followed by the 11 Pro Max. The Pixel 3 and 4 showed noticeably less details and a lot of noise. So let's move on to the next image. Here the subject isolation will be more challenging than the previous image and at the first glance the Pixel 4 was the best in subject isolation, it only missed very small parts compared to others. The 11 Pro Max comes second after the Pixel 4, followed by the Pixel 3 and the S20 Ultra comes last, missing a lot more areas than all of them. When it comes to white balance, the 11 Pro Max produced the warmest image, followed by the S20 Ultra, and the pixels had the coolest white balance. When it comes to details, the 11 Pro Max was the best, followed by the pixels, and the S20 Ultra comes last. One more image, and the 11 Pro Max once more produced the brightest and warmest image, but this time the image looked washed out due to the overexposure, the other three phones had very similar exposure and white balance. When it comes to details, the Pixel 3 and 4 produced the most detailed images. The iPhone's image is detailed, but the overexposure ruined the shot. And finally, the S20 Ultra produced a very soft image with low level of detail. When it comes to subject isolation, the Pixel 3 XL was the best in this shot with minimal issues. The Pixel 4 XL had issues with the area around the sleeve. The 11 Pro Max blurred the part of the hand and the sleeve, and finally the S20 Ultra blurred the same areas as the 11 Pro Max, but it was even worse. Overall in portraits, the subject isolation is always inconsistent, so I can't say that a specific phone is always better than others at this point. But unfortunately, the S20 Ultra was always the worst in this part. Beside the subject isolation, there are some findings. The Pixel 3 and 4 always produce the coolest white balance. Sometimes they produce a low level of detail and a high amount of noise. 
and in other images they do just well. The 11 Pro Max portraits are always the warmest and most of the time it produces very detailed images with low level of noise and it also has the highest exposure. The S20 Ultra produces similar exposure and white balance compared to the pixels but it has inconsistent results when it comes to details. Most of the time the images are soft with low level of detail but when things go right it shows very detailed images. Now let's start the selfie comparison. Here is the first image. The 11 Pro Max produced the most vibrant colors followed by the Pixel 4, then the Pixel 3, and the S20 Ultra image looks washed out due to the overexposure. The Pixel 4 and the S20 Ultra were the best in HDR, while the 11 Pro Max and the Pixel 3 just blown out the sky. When it comes to details, the 11 Pro Max produced the most detailed image and that was a surprise to me because usually the pixels show more details from the selfie camera. It seems that Apple improved the 11 Pro Max selfie camera recently. The second most detailed image is coming from the Pixel 3, not the Pixel 4 as I expected. The Pixel 4 produced the third most detailed image and the S20 Ultra comes last. Now let's make it more challenging and take a selfie in direct sunlight. This time the S20 Ultra couldn't focus on the subject and ruined the whole image. The 11 Pro Max is still showing the highest level of detail and the most vibrant colors, but it blown out the sky. The Pixel 3 comes second after the 11 Pro Max in the level of detail, but it did better than the 11 Pro Max in the HDR, and as expected it produced the least vibrant colors. The Pixel 4 produced less details than the 11 Pro Max and the Pixel 3, but it had better HDR than the two, however it showed some lens flares and it comes second after the iPhone in colors saturation. Now let's move on to the portrait selfies. Here is the same exact image but in portrait so the same findings mentioned before applies here. And I'm gonna only compare the subject isolation. When I zoom in I see the 11 Pro Max and the S20 Ultra isolated the subject perfectly while the Pixel 3 had issues around the ears. The Pixel 4 had the same issue but not as bad as the Pixel 3. Now let's move on to the zoom comparison. I will start by the 10x zoomed images because that's the maximum you can get with the 11 Pro Max and I'm gonna use Gcam mod called the Camera PX on the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 4 to compare up to 50x zoom. Here is the first image. The Pixel 4 produced the warmest image while the Pixel 3 has the coolest and the other two phones are somewhere in between. When I zoom in I see the Pixel 4 image looks very clean with the least amount of noise and artifacts while keeping the highest level of detail across all of them. The S20 Ultra and the Pixel 3 produced the softest images with the least amount of detail. The 11 Pro Max used software sharpening to increase the details but it resulted in more noise and artifacts. So let's move on to the next image. Same white balance results of the previous images so let's zoom in to compare the details. And again the Pixel 4 produced the most detailed image with the least amount of noise and artifacts. The iPhone produced the second most detailed image but with some noise and artifacts due to its software sharpening. The S20 Ultra this time showed a lot of artifacts as it tried to sharpen the image but it didn't produce good results. The Pixel 3 produced the softest image with the least amount of details so now let's compare the 30x zoom but this time the 11 Pro Max will be excluded. Now the S20 Ultra showed its full potential when it comes to zoom and it produced the best image in pretty much everything. The S20 Ultra image looks very sharp and detailed compared to the images coming out of the pixels. Let's push it even further and here all images are at 47x zoom as I couldn't get any further on the pixels due to an issue with the camera PX that couldn't allow me to capture any image after this mark. And still the S20 Ultra is the best hands down. So I'm not sure why the S20 Ultra didn't show its full potential when I was at 10x zoom but certainly the S20 Ultra is the best phone in the market when it comes to zoom. Now I'm done with the comparison and there are a lot of information shared in this video as I tried to be as detailed as possible to cover all the important questions that might come up to your mind before deciding which phone has the best camera. None of them was the best in everything, however each phone had its own strength, so I hope my video will help you pick the phone that suits your needs and the style. So that's pretty much it for today, I hope you like my video and if you do please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.